In this video, we're going to cover a specific kind of field with Ninja Forms, and that's hidden fields. Uh, now, this is going to be a short video because uh, it's pretty simple, uh, but I thought that it was important enough that we'd want to put it into a separate video. Uh, in order to look at Ninja for Forms, I'm just going to create a new form really quickly, and we're going to create a new blank form. And so for hidden fields, there's a couple different reasons that you'd use this. Uh, you might use them for your standard contact form. And uh, it could be a nice way to find out when a user filled out your form. Um, you know, you'll get an email notification or something like that. But if maybe if you had those turned off, uh, you'd still get to create it by. But uh, you might export these into an Excel sheet or something like that. And so you'd want that field separate just so you always had that data in the database. Um, another reason you might want to use hidden fields is if you are, for example, testing out different landing pages. Uh, so you had three or four landing pages and, and they were all sharing the same ninja form. So the same ninja form was inserted on multiple landing pages, right? Uh, so even though it's the, the same form, we would want to see where it's converting better or which landing page is converting better and getting people to fill out that form. And so a hidden field can tell you what page the form was on. Uh, when you uh, when the user filled it out now obviously you could just use different forms but if you're going to be exporting all of that data or integrating it with a MailChimp list or something like that then you'd want it all to be coming from the same form so this is kind of a neat way to do that so just to kind of show you I'm going to create a quick contact form so we'll just have a name an email address and a paragraph text so this is our standard contact form and then we're going to go down to the hidden fields, which is, sorry, here under mis miscellaneous fields. So we'll, we'll add in a hidden field and you'll see when you click on hidden, uh, under the default value under hidden, you'll see the little uh, merge tag icon. And so if we click on here, it gives us a few different options here. The first is the fields that are in the form. Uh, so you could have this hidden field capture that data for some reason, if that's something you wanted. Uh, you can also click on this WordPress category, and that's going to show you WordPress related fields. Now, there's some interesting stuff here. The post ID, title, or URL, that's what you can use to determine what page they were on when they filled out the form. Specifically, the post title or the post URL is going to help you. The post ID would just be the ID number of the, the page, so uh, that wouldn't help you too much. But the page title or the page URL specifically would help you. They're going to be able to tell you which landing page or which page they were on when they filled it out. Um, post author and stuff like that, that wouldn't really be used for that, but you can also get that. So if you had a form, uh, if you had, you know, a, a blog with multiple authors and you had a form on the bottom of each post, you might want to be able to use that to see which author is bringing in the most conversions or something like that. If they're a registered user of your site, you can, they fill out the form. You can also get whatever information is stored in the database about them. So the user ID, first name, last name, display name, uh, email address, things like that. Um, and if you have multiple sites, if you're doing a multi-site, you can get the site title on the site URL. So you can see there's some interesting information we can get here uh, by using the hidden fields. Uh, and then under other, we have the date and we have the user IP address. And so if you wanted to see, you know, where users were contacting you from without asking for that information in the form, you can get at least their country usually by grabbing the IP address or something like that. And it's just good for tracking and stuff like that as well. Um, so that's hidden fields. So all we would need to do if we would want that, let's say we wanted the, the post URL or uh, yeah, the post URL. Uh, so we would just click that and you can see that now it's put a short code in there and this is going to be the default value. And now that we've, we'll publish that form. And we'll check it out on the preview. And so you can see, you'll see on the preview that I see my first name, email and paragraph but I don't see the hidden field. But if somebody fills that out, I will then get the URL, right? So let's try that out. So now my form is published and let's insert it into a page. And we'll insert our form and publish. And I'll open up that page for us. And I'll just make sure that I have it set to store entries. So 
So this is under our emails and actions. And yes, so it is storing it. I'll turn off the email because I don't need that. And we'll publish it. And I'll refresh my page. So now if I quickly fill this out, and hit submit. So now this is going to be saved in my back end. So if I close this and I look at submissions, and so you can see here under the hidden field, it's going to tell me that it was the contact form with hidden fields page that I was on when I filled out that page. So uh, that's hidden fields. It's just a nice little trick that you can do to uh, test out uh, which pages are more successful or uh, you know where your users are coming from and things like that. So check out the different options and incorporate those into your fields if you feel the need.